Christina? Um, I had a little bit of a story and uh, definitely a question. Go ahead. Um, so when my son's dad decided to move back in with us, my 17-year-old daughter got upset. And she said that if he moved in, that she was moving out. So we agreed that she would go stay with my sister once he moved in, like, two months after that. Um, she was 17. So two months later, I get a call. Well, I get CPS involved. I didn't know who made the call at the time. I thought it was the hospital at first. Um, but then her birthday, she turns 18 October 19th. Well, that day we had a trial set date. Um, since she turned 18 the next day while at trial, they, the, her attorney asked the judge to remove her from the case completely. So they granted it. Well, as I was reading the DEI investigator's report, I come to find out my daughter is the one that made the report. And it states in the report several times um, that she wants my kids, which are my three, my three younger children, not my older ones, that she wants my children. And if she could take them, she would. And that's the whole reason CPS got involved, because she wanted my kids. And I'm just finding this out, like maybe, like I said, October 19th. But now that she's no longer on the case, my question is, um, do I need to subpoena her to court now? Or because she's the one that made the allegation, am I, I'm, I have to, you know, I'm already, I got all the evidence I need, but I don't know what to do to fight all the allegations she made up. Can I ask what the allegations were? Oh, gosh. Um. Just a couple, Let's or see. when I um, when I lived in when I lived in South Carolina, she stated I lived in a two bedroom apartment, and that I was having sex in front of the kids. That I um, when she went to go take like when here in California, um, when she wanted to go take a shower, she said I was doing the nasty, and that I, I let her in my room to go take a shower and I'm thinking why would I do that we have three full bathrooms in my house so there's no reason for her to come in my room and take a shower if you know that just doesn't make any sense to me she said my other daughter wasn't taking her medication correctly and she said I was hitting the kids with spatulas belts all kinds of stuff they had shoes and I was just like what um my sister stayed in there several times as well that she's been to my house um, but she's never once been in my house at all this year. So even the CPS lady knows for a fact she's never been to my house. So the fact that she stated to the DI that she's been to my house and she hasn't. So did CPS? Oh, all the allegations are mainly coming from my daughter. Did CPS in investigate these allegations, or did they just remove your children? No, they actually didn't remove the kids. Um, luckily my lawyer was able to, um, I was able to keep my kids, um, but they, the DI is the lady that's investigating. She's the one that writing the report. So, um, that it's all, you know, just what she, what my daughter says in the report. They never actually verified any of the information. Um, well, oh, Christina, yes, hold on, Christina, to answer, to answer your question, if you want to cross-examine your daughter, you're going to have to subpoena her to court, you and your attorney. Okay, is that a good idea to do that, or should we not do that, is what I'm wondering. Well, that's a difficult question for me to answer, because, number one, I don't know anything about your case other than what you've said. Number two, um, you know... I can't second guess your attorney uh, who is more familiar with the case. I will tell you this. If you subpoena her and she gets on the stand and, you know, tells the same story, um, that's a bad thing. Yeah. Right? But, you know, I don't yeah. know how your attorney would cross-examine her. Uh, might do a great job, might not do a great job. It just depends. Um, you know, do you think that if she got on the stand under oath that she'd tell the truth? You know, I don't know what she's, I've, this, this is not my daughter that I've ever, 
like my daughter, we were very close. So this is unusual for me. Yeah. I think. And, and here's the other thing. You know, there's a general rule. There's a lot of exceptions to it. There's a general rule, though, that you don't want to subpoena a witness to court when you know they're going to testify against you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one thing for the judge to see it on paper. It's another thing for the judge to look in, you know, your daughter's eyes while she's testifying. How old are the other children? Um, my old, my son, he's 19. He's a year older than my daughter. He's going to testify against my daughter. But you I said know that. you said you had younger children that your older daughter is trying uh, to take. Yes, they're four, two, and one's about to turn one years old. Are your children at least with relatives or family friends? They're no, with... I still have custody. They never were able to take oh. them. Oh, that well, that says a lot. Mm -hmm. But they still took me to court, and they're trying to press like six different charges against me. I'm like, yeah, no. You know what I think you should do is I think you should email your attorney and ask for a meeting in person or on Zoom or on the telephone so that you guys can plan a strategy for this case. Because the one thing you, yeah, don't, you the one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to have a hearing and then lose the children that you have. Yeah, yeah. I think our next date is trial, so December 9th and tenth. Um, so, we know, are making a strategy. I just, you know, sometimes when I can't get answers from her, sometimes I like to call you. So. <laughs> okay, you know, I I don't mind you doing that, but your attorney knows the case better than anyone, right? Yeah. Okay, so, you know, try to email her and uh, see if she can have a meeting with you in the next few days. Okay, and then also, you know what I, I wanted to ask? Is it normal? Because um, the DI investigator paperwork, I read it, and I even read it with the social worker, and she, the social worker, she's more on my side than the DI side. Mm -hmm. And she said none of the reports that she has made is in the DI's report whatsoever. Well, you know what, what you have to do is you're going to have to talk to your attorney about subpoenaing that social worker, put her on the stand, and have her say that. And then find out exactly what has she told the DI that the DI hasn't put in the report. Okay. Because yeah, generally, generally, you know, in my opinion, DIs are trying to, you know, in 95% of the cases, they're trying to prove a case against you. They're, yeah. not, they're not interested, in my opinion, helping you out. Now, occasionally I come across a DI who's, you know, who I think is fair and, and, and reasonable. But a lot of times I get the impressions that DIs are just trying to win the case. Yes, that's what I got from her automatically. As soon as she came to my house, she was against me the complete time. I didn't even let her inside because I was like, you know what? The social worker's been inside my house. She, she was there with her. And I said, I'll let her in my house, but you're not coming in my house. Right. But um, my social worker said I have, have the right to deny her access. My social worker seems more on my side. I even record, I've been recording her the whole time she's been in my house. Uh -oh. and hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know, it's a uh -huh. crime. It's a crime to record somebody in California without their knowledge. Yeah, I only give it to my lawyer. I don't give it to nobody else. It, it's, it's still me. it's still a crime. Okay. They can put you in jail for that, and they can fine you. I think it's five thousand times for each recording. Even though we're not using it, we're just using it as, like, like we're not using it, yet, but just to show my attorney what's going on. Christina, I'm just yeah. telling you, okay? Okay. All right. So there is no exception unless it's a, you know, there are some exceptions, but I think you can record a felony in progress or, you know, some other things. But what you're telling me, so, uh, it's taping the social worker, that's not a good thing if they find you. Find that out, they might hang, hang you out to dry on that one. So be very okay. careful, okay? Hey, okay. Christina, call us in a few weeks. Let us know what happened. I want to thank you for calling and thank you for listening to the station. And uh, okay. keep us keep us uh, abreast of what's going on. Yes, I will. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. One thing that I get so irritated with is family members calling and making false allegations. Right. Because that's what that's what happened to you, right? It, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You know, families are very complex social groups, right? Everybody's got different agendas. I can't in my own head 
think of any reason for somebody that I dislike uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, out of 10, that I would ever right. do that. Okay, we'll be back with the top of the hour, some more uh, commercials and news break. And we'll be back with more questions, more stories. This is The Secret, how to fight child protective services and when.